you. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll do. Thank you very much. Pleasure. So you settled there, right? You're from. You have a. Yeah, yeah. 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 Now, my friends are also settled. They have a Singapore passport now. So. All right, wonderful. <laughs> So this is because of Avinash Deshpande that we are in touch. Yeah? <laughs> He's the man. We we all are mediums, man. We all are mediums. It's all uh, there, supposed That's to. That's a great initiative, though, Avinash. I must appreciate the way you are doing conducting, and it's very good. Thank you. Something like this, on and different variety of topics, you know, and that's what I think everyone should really look for. Yes. My hope life. it adds value and anything that adds value to the community is something that uh, we look forward to so what's your plan i mean in terms of ad coaching are you going to uh, do uh, further develop this or just uh, online like this what's your plan no what happens is i uh, basically do coaching so one on one coaching is my forte so yeah. conversational hypnosis and um, uh, nlp coaching is what i do but then these are the mediums where i get the uh, clients from and there you have sujit hi sujit <laughs> so good to see you like sujit was the medium in this case for us to connect with uh, puja all right okay. good morning all good morning sujit sujit has many contacts hi sujit how are you good 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 prasad here Good to see Pooja, madam. <laughs> this is going to be rocking. I know. <laughs> yeah, as long as it adds value to all everyone out here, I think we make me the purpose. Hi, Reshma. Hi, Pooja. How are you doing? From where are you logging in? I am logging in from Pune. Wonderful. I have been to Pune. I have been in to there? Pune. Uh, Two years back, I, there was an award ceremony um, for which I was nominated. So I have been to Pune, and I love. And there's a Sambalpur College as well, right there yes. in Pune. Yeah, yeah. Very close to my home. Mm -hmm. I think in Pune, these streets are named as per the days. Is it? I'm, I'm just trying to recall. Or have I mixed it up? Yeah, yeah. The city, the old city, is named after the days. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I vividly remember because when I had been to Pune, it was like Guruvar Chennai, and I was like, okay, that's interesting. Yes. It's so good to see you. Very old Pune. Yeah. All right. So maybe I had been to the old Pune. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Great. Hi, Anand. Hi, Ubay. I'm just trying to see. I mean, whoever is uh, is flashing on my screen, I'm seeing them. Hi, but hello to everyone. Whoever has joined in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. We have people from Qatar, Mumbai, Bangalore, Pune. So far, and of course, Singapore as well. So. <laughs> We'll just give a couple of minutes more, as we yeah. all know. I mean, historically, we have seen that the first five minutes is just for connecting, due to uh, some of the technical, non-technical breakfast challenges, tea challenges, coming and settling down challenges. Uh, Avinash, uh, Avinash, Abhay, yeah. Uh? Abhay, good uh, morning. Yeah. Morning, morning, morning. I mean, the signal doesn't seem to be uh, uh, powerful. Uh, it's showing red and yellow. Hence, is the it? video is uh, freezing. Is it for, uh, because I am connecting yeah, through the right now. through the, the yeah I am connecting through the land. I mean through the landline. So it shouldn't ideally. Hope it's uh, Reshma Sujit. For others, Sridhar. Yes, very fine. Good morning, everyone. Oh, good, good morning. morning. So there, uh, I could see. Uh, Avinas, I can hear you well. I can uh, see well, so no problem with. Me. Okay, great. Just to make sure that uh, everybody Sunil, can hear. Okay. Sunil, uh, it is not that you hear, Avinas. Yeah, 
Yeah. Avinash, it's not Sunil or individual hearing. The signal is getting yellow and red. So you will have interruption during the... Uh, yes. So we need to understand from which side. I mean, sometimes it's the user side and sometimes it's the host side. So hopefully it's it's because that's why I've connected last time, as Abhay, you mentioned, that connect directly with the uh, LAN. Uh, Ab Abhinash, I'll be right it's back. I need to uh, yeah. plug in the charger on sure. my laptop. Sure. All right, I'll be right back. Yes, yeah. Pooja. Thank you. Good morning, Abhinash. Good morning, Gayatri Ji, Kashyat. We will just give two more minutes. Good morning. Good morning, Deepak ji. Namaskar. Namaskar, Namaskar. Great, we have more people connecting in and we will start in a minute or so. We'll not close uh, this meeting, right? Because Gaurav is trying actually. Something is uh, something is issue. He is not able to connect it. So okay. Uh, so we'll keep it. One yeah, we'll keep it open, no problems. We'll keep it open. Yeah. Because last time uh, we had uh, people saying that after some time they they were not able to connect. So we'll just keep it open because yeah, okay. of the different locations, sometimes there is a challenge in people connecting. Okay, okay. Thanks. Great. I think I'll just start with the um, introduction. And then as we have more people joining in, probably uh, that's just before uh, Pooja takes over and starts with the wonderful session that we are going to have today. So just to brief uh, people who are uh, new and connecting for the first time, um, ADS Coaching uh, is having this initiative called um, Dream, Believe and Achieve, uh, which is a series of online sessions that we have been conducting for uh, the past uh, seven weeks or so. I'm just going to put this Facebook Live thing and I'm just going to check how it works. This is the first time I'm doing Facebook Live, so I'm not sure how it will go, but it is worth doing it because we have the wonderful Pooja and it is for us to share with the Facebook community as well. So just give me a minute while I do that. Please bear with me. Okay, so hopefully this goes through on my page. Yes, exactly. So just give me a minute more. Thank you. There it goes. I'm trying to connect. Okay. 
sorry for this short this thing but it has because it's the first time it should be good there it goes it's saying preparing live live streaming preview so that if people join in they can view this later on as well that's it excellent so yes this is an initiative by uh, ad's coaching and this is the seventh uh, session that we are doing as a part of this uh, dream believe and achieve uh, series now this particular session uh, which is on parenting and the next session which is also going to be on the art of parenting is specifically designed based on the feedback that we have received from all the past community uh, members stating that they would like to have this kind of a topic so the topics that we decide are based on the feedback uh, that we receive from um, you people so again thank you so much for all that comments all the feedback it makes a lot of sense to uh, do something which is um, which adds value to you um, fair enough. Uh, just before I begin, a uh, special thanks um, to Sujit Khanloskar for connecting uh, me with Pooja and getting this initiative uh, possible, making this initiative possible for all of us to share this wonderful session with Pooja. So thank you so much uh, for that. Um, Sujit is a part of the um, Maharashtra, Maharashtra Professional Forum community and uh, this is where we share and care so that's thank you again for that now without much ado let me uh, introduce you to uh, Pooja who is a wonderful personality uh, with us today and just to give you a brief about her she has over a decade of rich and accomplished experience in human resources in the various sectors globally her students view her as a change agent uh, who she helps to scale greater heights. Uh, she has driven successfully large scale interventions in renowned uh, global companies. She has uh, designed creatively uh, many initiatives um, like uh, for entrepreneurs, women, millennials, uh, young leaders and tomorrow's uh, future leaders. So she has facilitated transformational journeys of people from over six countries. So that's uh, a lot of experience that she comes with. Uh, she has worked with uh, more than 200 plus coaches whom she has coached. And she was the youngest member in the senior leadership role for a leading global manufacturing organization. Now, Pooja's journey uh, from a small town struggling um, girl, if I may say, to, to, to be a great motivational speaker, the great coach, the leadership coach that she is today, um, is a reflection of her personal leadership, which she now inculcates with other people. She is an internationally certified life and executive coach. Uh, and she says that she is humbled on being mentored by John Maton, who is an ex-coach of Steve Jobs in the leadership space. So that's really an achievement. And that is an experience she brings to us today. She has been recognized for her work and being conferred as one of the 51 influential women and as a thought leader for her work in the millennial space. Her life trajectory, which was published in the stories of Asia, Singapore, was amongst the top five stories which resonated deeply with different generations. Um, she is also recognized by the African Institute for her contribution in coaching 1000 plus young leaders. And she was nominated six times as LinkedIn's Wonder Woman. And I'm sure uh, her, her session would uh, definitely give us an example of the same. She is being recognized for a humanitarian work and conferred as a global goodwill ambassador. She drives her inspiration from life, nature, and she has two uh, Gen Z kids, as she calls them. She is on a bold mission to create communities of courageous, authentic leaders who are inspiring and can ignite hope and create more leaders 
around the same theme. She is a huge advocate of personal leadership, inward excellence. Um, she says inward excellence leads to outward excellence and believes that personal leadership is an expression of life and needs to start early. In today's session, she is going to give us those golden nuggets of parenting. And I think we are um, awaiting uh, to receive uh, those and add value to us as parents. So uh, while, while I could keep on speaking more about uh, Pooja, I think uh, uh, she, she really has a varied experience. And I would, uh, without f further ado, want to take um, Pooja, would you please take over and start the uh, session for us? Thank you. Thank you so much, Avinash, for your kind words. And thank you, Suji, uh, for this connection here. And now to all the elders who are watching here online or as well, whenever they watch in uh, later, and namaste to all of you. So what is going to be today's session? We are going to be doing about parenting. Am I an expert in parenting? I'm on a journey as well, like all of you. All right. What I'm going to do is it's an amalgamation of my experience, the way I have grown, uh, being a parent, uh, you know, while as my role as a daughter, as well as my role in the personal leadership coach in the corporate. That's where I felt there's so many things which can be inculcated right at an early age. So today's session is going to be more about think shop. Well, I'm going to invite all of us, we're going to pause, we're going to reflect, we're going to think, we're going to activate our inner compass. That's what I have planned in my TV. It's going to be a highly interactive workshop. Okay. As I say, there's no good or there's no bad parenting. It is all about evolving. Because if you look at the word parent, and if you even do a Google search, it is, you know, it is more about us, how are we evolving in the in the process but what happens is we completely drive it towards the child and that's where comparison criticism all those things come in right so today um what i have for you is we are going to pause we're going to reflect on various styles of parenting what i have usually observed we're going to deep dive in what is conscious parenting what is intentional parenting and then after that, we're going to map on our own style so that we can move the needle. So that's what I have for you all. Mr. Are we okay with the plan? Then give me a thumbs up. Are we okay? Does it sound good to you guys? All right, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so let's get started. Uh, I'm just sharing my, uh, my screen here. Yes, Pooja, we can see the screen now. Hope everyone can see it. You can see the screen, all of you? Yes. All right. Wonderful. Whenever we are faced with any challenges in life, what are three things we do? Either we give up, either we give in to that, or we say like, come on, I'm going to roll in my sleeves and I'm going to give it my best. Right? Now let's think if this is something which comes to our children, what we would want them. I'm sure majority of us wouldn't want them to give up. Like I'm not going to do it. I can't do it or completely give in and be it in the flow. We would want them to be like, you know, really face it. But the question out here is, are we really preparing them to face it? Now, this is what I realized that in the corporate, I was telling people like uh, my coaches, come on, you need to you know, cut off your codes from the past. You need to move forward. It's okay, whatever has happened from the past, learn it, but don't you know, really hold it tight. But then I felt, am I practicing this with my children? And I felt, no, I'm not really practicing it with my children. Because somewhere, subconsciously, I would tell my daughter, Hey, listen, you need to really, um, let me give you a classic example. My daughter wanted to take in French, okay? And she is now in grade five. She wanted to take French in grade three. And I was like dissuading her. 
why do you why do you want to take in French? You have not even studied it from before. It's going to be so difficult. Why do you want to do it? So here, my daughter wanted to explore the world. She said, like, it's okay, Mama, if I've not done till now, yet I can do it. But what I was doing as a parent, I was holding her back. And let's think that in the corporate, we are being evaluated on taking the initiatives. Like, how well are you taking initiative? How well have you tried different things? But have are we encouraging this to our children? I realized I was not. And then again, I kept on seeing the pattern and I became very conscious about what pattern was I reflecting in, in my parenting. So obviously when you go out and you're, you have like um, peers and they would say, oh, that daughter or that person or this child age group is able to do this. Okay, my daughter or my kid should as well. So I think that's where subconsciously, you know, we're comparing so much that we miss the bus. And even if you see the education system, right? I'm, I'm in all for the education, but if you really see, what do you see education system trying to teach? In the education system, if the child who is, uh, who, who is just like, you know, who has, um, in an exam, who has reproduced something which is not meeting the criteria, we say like, you are not, you are not going to be cleared. You didn't meet the criteria. What was required for the examination, you have not really presented that. But let's say when someone is starting in the entrepreneurship journey, what is expected? It is expected that the person is innovative. So there is so much of gap, right? There's so much of deep struggle, and that's what got me interested in this. So parenting is all about the personal transformation. How much we are going to transform ourselves in that journey? That that is going to be proportionate to the empowering children. Because we all want our children to be happy, to be successful, and to like really go ahead and face all the uncertainty. And this would require, my friends, for us to bring in a deep personal transformation within us. So the paradigm shift. There are two mindsets, two types of parenting, traditional and mindful parenting. So what is traditional parenting? Traditional parenting is very child-centric. We have all the warmth and all the affection for the child, but every child is equal to the outcome that what my child is achieving, with respect to the studies or with respect to the other parameters. So it's completely always evaluating a yardstick case. More of a carpenter mindset. What does the carpenter do? Anyone. We, it has a fixed design, a fixed model, and it tries to put in that structure, oh. right? And that's what we do. We feel like as while I was growing up, I did this wrong. I don't want my child to suffer. In, and that's why we bring in our past patterns so much into this journey. Whereas what is mindful parenting? It is taking an accountability that if I want my children to do something, I need to first demonstrate that. It's more based on connection. Traditional is more of, um, you know, authority. Mindful parenting is more about the problem solving. I'm coming with a solution. I'm coming, I'm, I'm empathizing. I'm understanding their space. It's more about the curiosity. I want to know. And overall, it looks at it as a journey. So, you know, I often tell that whenever we are approaching in life, approach with a traveler mindset and not with a tourist mindset. Now, what's the difference between a traveler and tourist approach? So tourist would be someone who would go Typically, when we are doing the tours, we go to a few places and we say, okay, fine, these are the top five attractions. I don't want to miss out. Whereas the traveler is completely in the journey. We'll go and interact with the people and they're traveling light. You know, you just see they just travel with one backpack. They're not traveling with huge luggages out there. So that's what we as a parent need to travel light. How can we travel light? Is when we don't have so much of luggage of our past pattern of oh wow what my friend is doing what the teacher is saying no we just travel with a backpack a light backpack and we just be immersed in that journey so that's where the consciousness comes in and that's what i'm going to invite you to uh, to look within to strengthen our consciousness 
So the conscious view and the traditional view, as I discussed, conscious view is more relationship focused. Traditional is more behavior focused. If my child is doing good, hey, if you do this, you will get a chocolate or I'll ensure that whatever you do, if you finish this chapter of this is what you are able to achieve, I will ensure that I give you a gift. So it's, it's us, you know, what actually conditioning them, isn't it? We are conditioning them that if you achieve this, this is what is going to happen. And if they don't study, we tell them like, do you remember in the past, you just didn't follow my advice and you saw what happened with your marks. So you better follow my advice. And suppose if there is a drip in the grade, we tell them, you just didn't listen to me. And that's why this is a thing. So we don't allow them to forget. We allow them, we somewhere get them like, you know, carry your past baggage with you. We get them instill the fear mindset. They are born fearless. They are born with the mindset to keep on track. People keep on experimenting. But we get them into so much. The conscious parenting is finding a mutual ground. It is meeting the child in his space or her space. It is, that's what I said, the traveler approach, that you are ready. There's no ego in that. The moment your child doesn't listen to you, you feel like, hey, he's challenging me. I know them. I know it more. Very interestingly, three days back, um, my coach, T, who is uh, a general manager, he asked me, like, Pooja is reading books good. I said, yeah, reading books is good. He said, that's what I told my son. And my son is like, you tell me in a week, how many books have you read that you're asking me? So just imagine, I mean, he is, is questioning me, Pooja. I mean, is this the generation what it is? The new generation is all about. Then I asked him, do you really want me to give you a view on this? He said, yeah. I said, you need to demonstrate. If you want your child to listen or to understand that books are important, it can be even other ways. They can be podcasts. Because this new generation, they learn, they learn to listen more through podcasts. And are you holding the book that you're expecting your child to do it? If you are glued on the cell and shooting your child, it's not a good behavior. Why on the dining table are you getting yourself? But when you are on the dining table, have you kept your cell phone away? So then the child picks up the cues. He feels like, okay, this is an accepted behavior. And then there is a confusion which is going on. That why is it that when I do something, it's not accepted. When they do, it's accepted. So we teach them that differently. So that's why I want to keep on emphasizing. And you would hear it till the end. I'll keep on emphasizing. It is all about us. We need to bring in the personal transformation if we want empowering children. Very interestingly, um, as I told you that I myself, I was on a journey of understanding because I was seeing like, okay, in the corporate, I could see there was a lot of emerging from the childhood pattern and that's where I became very conscious and some research which I did. Um, it is our brain. It develops from back to front, from inside to out. Children are born with 25% of the brain development they already have. So the brain is made malleable. You know, you can you can really um, at any age till the age of uh, I mean till we till we leave this world, it is very malleable. It can keep on. You can keep on conditioning it. Obviously, with the younger children, it's high. And interestingly, what got my uh, attention is there are three types of brain. Now there are various. Uh, you know, it can be categorized for our layman understanding. There are three types. Survival brain is what we are born with. Okay, we are born with it. So it helps us like if there's any flashlight or something which is coming in. So you see the child really starts responding. If there's any flashlight or there is anything, they start responding. So that's something we are born with. That's the lowest uh, end. Then there's a midbrain. That's where we develop our emotions. Now, when do we uh, develop our emotions? Is between the age of zero to five years is when we actually start developing our emotions and that's the time that's why we should read a lot of story books my son is five year old my daughter is 12 or uh, 12 she's going to be 12 so that's the time you know when you keep on reading lots of books to them what happens you develop that empathy 
because when you're reading a character you see oh wow this is what the character has gone through and in their own world they start imagining and that's the time then you know it's very important this is a time wherein you would form the belief systems in child this is the time wherein the fear anxiety or empathy develop then there is an executive brain the executive brain is where it's a problem solving approach so it's all a continuum so which starts the rational approach to the thing starts from 6 years to 25 years so we are unfolding it till 25 years right and there are three milestones so one is uh, 11 to 12 then there is 15 years and obviously it keeps on unfolding so not just imagine now if you know this and if you are able to flex a muscle accordingly it would help our children as well because at the age of 10 i hear um many, uh, many parents coming in and telling me my child is not responsible he is not taking onus he just doesn't understand time management you know when there is any problem i see pooja he wants continuously me my dear friends please understand the executive brain the rational brain is developing till 25 years is just unfolding each day right and the majority is happening in the 11 years and 15 years and that's where you see like children start sometimes being grizzled right you see like oh now he is just not listening he wants to do or she wants to do what her friends are doing that's the time the peer pressure comes in so what can we do we need to change and tune ourselves if someone is into dance or if someone is into music i'm sure in the slow music rhythm we will not have a fast steps i'm sure and at the fast rhythm you will not have very slow steps right you would match it for example if i am going to speak in mandarin and none of you understand mandarin we will not be able to establish that connect and that's what happens yo we need to understand what is their um what is their listening style which has become very active so you very briefly i'm going to introduce you to four kind of listening style which you have to identify and you have to match your stroke for example now there is one listening style which is a very content oriented now what is this content oriented they are very interested when you tell them like this is a research or this is what i have seen or um, when the focus is highly on the content the second is personal oriented the child listens like you know if there is any influencer or, or any person whom he or she closely identifies with that's why sometimes you would see like um, sometimes uh, children listen to their grandparents or they would listen to uh, to their father or to mother or to any one sibling elder sibling or something this is because of that person oriented listening style then there is time oriented after 10 minutes or 5 minutes the brain is switched off they can't so your your message has to be very crisp and has to be delivered within that 5 minutes and this is action oriented when you're talking to them in 2 minutes they would realize like what what is in it for me is it in it for me something then they will continue to listen now what happens is we fail to understand that what is our children's listening style what is their listening style and let's imagine if, if for example if uh, deepak's listening style is content oriented and uh, let's say a treater is speaking to deepak in person oriented like you know uh, influencing like would deepak listen to deepak will not so that's what we need to do how can we do this very simple technique identify your own listening style identify map in your family whose listening style is, is what and then try to deliver your message accordingly it would help to establish that connect so now we are going to get deeper into it the mindful parenting So we're going to get deeper into it. That are we being conscious? Are we being intentional? So we are going to have few exercises. So everything starts with self awareness. Like for me, the journey started with self awareness, right? So being aware is three aspects for me. One is internally, how aware you are about your own shortcomings, about your own style, and do you take a feed forward from your family? It's so important. Always, we are always giving them. a feedback that we need to take a feed forward from our family members especially from our young children 
and sometimes you can just deburst it. I'm going to be very vulnerable and I'm going to share a lot of my family examples here. So we have a family time circle time. So we all were sitting and um, that's where we all give each other a free power. So my daughter, she, uh, she told that uh, I don't find mama is, is as humorous or as playful as dad. Dad is always very playful. Mom is a little serious. And my son was, no, I find mom is very, very playful. Then, uh, then we went on, you know, that challenging the belief or challenging that thought process. Like, why do you think so? Uh, I would love to know more. Uh, so she said, because, you know, whenever I want to play any games, any board on the mobile, uh, especially nowadays, my children love playing Ludo. So you would be like, no, I don't want to play. So that's why I felt. So my son's like, no, but if you call her for dance or if you call her for some acting or some drawing, she wants to do. So see, the interests are different. So that's why their perceptions are different. And then she understood, okay, fine. Maybe uh, mom doesn't like mobile. She doesn't like online Ludo. And that's why. But yeah, otherwise she is playful. So for them, what happened? The vocabulary got expanded. So whenever you are taking a feed forward, which is so important, you help. That's the time when you can communicate to them and their vocabulary gets expanded that having fun or being playful is not only Ludo, it can be expressed in different ways. And that's the time we debug so many things. So it's an internal, what do you feel? Externally taking it and integrating it. Integration is so, so important. So this is something of very interesting circle. And I want to tell you what it is here. So as I gave you example of my daughter, so what happens is, whatever they keep on saying, now another example is, as I told you even previously, that if you get mobile phone on dining table, children feel it's okay. If you are not sensitive, or um, if you are not sensitive with other people, children feel, okay, that's the way of life, that we need to first think about ourselves. Or if we keep on telling them, like, hey, exams are approaching, you better study, you don't share so much with your friends. You know, they will have a competitive advantage. Then they feel there's a very limited pie for me. They come up with a scarcity approach, not with the abundant approach. So what happens is, it happens even with us, even with the other. Whatever we see, constantly, whatever you're going to see, you're going to start feeling that, you're going to start thinking, and that's going to affect the way you are acting, your gestures. So thought, speech, deed. Your voices, you know, whatever you're saying about your child, Somewhere it becomes their inner voice. So wherever you are speaking about your child, it becomes their inner voice. Even if you are saying in anger that I'm tired of you, you just don't listen to me, it becomes their inner voice. For example, um, I was doing a boot camp uh, with children, and in my second batch, I asked one of I asked everyone to describe themselves in one word. So one of them they said I'm very helpful. The other one said I'm very naughty. So I told them, give me an example. Now, this were the children, um, they were of age 8 years to 14 years. So I told them, give me an example. Why do you feel you are very helpful? You know, my mother always tells me that I keep on helping her. The other one said, because my dad always says, like, I am tired of him. He just doesn't listen to me. I don't know what to do. So that's why, ma'am, I thought I'm very naughty and difficult for everyone. <laughs> when I asked them the example, that's what they cited it. Right, and this is where people from coming from different geographies. It's very, very prominent. What you would say will become their inner voice. So be very careful of what you're speaking. And sometimes they feel, you know, people start equating. In fact, there was a very interesting experiment which was been done by Sheena Yen. Uh, she did an experiment just to see about the decision making, okay? So what she did, she, uh, she got that uh, puzzle and she got some color, a color pencil. For the first set, she said like your parents have chosen. For the other set, she said you can choose whatever you want. And for the third set, they gave them. Now this was an experiment which was done with Asia and I think with the American children as well. One of the Asian kids went on and to say, like, please tell my parents that I chose the set what they had chosen for me so you know just see how much influence somewhere the children have deep within right when i was doing a vision board exercise with the children majority of them they had like i want to get 90 percent i want to get 60 percent i want to get 80 percent i want to be the topper 
I think this is what you really want. This is what the vision is. See, yeah, that's what is going to make our, our parents happy. Because, you know, for them, their immediate comfort is what makes us happy. And we need to travel to their space. They are going to, and what happens with us is we are continuously like just speaking like, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. So what happens at one point of time, just imagine if I keep on speaking continuously to Harish or uh, to Sujit or to Avinash, at some point of time, if it's not making sense to them, they'll just close their ears and they will say like, you know, it's her habit. She keeps on saying, she's this way only. And that's what even sometimes children do that. So what do we, what do we have to do? You have to be very careful, not keep on being a flabbergast who keeps on saying it all the time. Try to demonstrate them by the action. They would listen through your actions, what you want them to do. If you want them to pick up a habit which you think is very important, you first analyze and see that what's a habit which is, which is not so good and which I shouldn't want them, they want you to change. Try doing that. Try being with them on that journey and they would enjoy it. It's not what you do for children which will determine their success. Rather, what you have taught them to do for themselves. Right? It's very important. We need to teach them continuously. Not, you know, this is what you have to think, but how to think so that they can be successful. All right. So now we're going to get into some action. If you have some notepad or pen, that would be great uh, with you. If not, you could use your mobiles or anything. What I want you to do is, um, I want you to examine this part, okay, very carefully. And I want you to write, if there are couples sitting, then please do it individually and then do collective as, as well, okay? So what I want you to do is, I want you to think, if you yourself, if you think your parenting journey right now, which part of the car denotes your parenting journey. For example, for me, I feel right now my parenting um, journey is, I feel I'm like a steering wheel uh, with my age of children. What I would want to become, I would want to become maybe the head life. What do my, what do my children view me as? They view me as an engine. So that's what I would invite you to do. Then what do you think? What is your perception? Where are you in your parenting journey? Which part of the car do you think? Maybe all parts are not very clear, but I'm sure all of us are very car savvy or we know the part. So, you know, even if there are some parts which are not here, please go ahead and think about it and write it down. Then I'll take two volunteers. I would work and exercise along with them. First thing, I think I had this listed down. Yeah, so this are three things um, what I want you to do. First thing is which part of the car you think you are. Second is which part of the car uh, in the parenting journey, okay? Your family, so let's say your children or your spouse thinks you to be, you imagine. And which part of the car you want to be in your parenting journey. So can we have all of us writing it down? Because now this is the time that we're going to roll our sleeves and get on to that thing workshop. Then I would invite two of you to volunteer. So I'll again repeat, um, when you see this car, I'm, I'm sure like you, you know majority of the part of the car, which part of the car do you think in the parenting journey you are? Which part of the car you want to be? Okay, GPS, starting system, where you are, starting point, destination, where you want to be, okay? Uh, and what your family member, uh, let's say your spouse or your children think of you to be. What do they think? I mean, how are you as a parent? What do they think you to be? So when you write any one part, I want you to write that why do you think that you are that part? All right. Are we clear all of us? Yeah? Great. So whoever is ready to walk Volunteer, just uh, you know, uh, give a shout out to Avinash because I can't see everyone, and then let me know. I'll I'll be happy to take two volunteers. Yes, you can either put it in the chat box or you can just shout out. Yes.
can you go on to the question uh, screen? Yes, Shall I go, Avinash? Yes, please. This yes. is Prasad. Okay, my my wife is also my wife is also sitting with me here. All right, uh, is it Deepa? Both, it's no, no, Prasad, Prasad here. Prasad. Okay, yes, Prasad, go ahead. So both of us believe that I am the wheel. Okay, why? And the, the reason for being a wheel is that uh, being uh, currently the head of the family, I'm driving the entire vehicle, which is the family. Okay. So in your parenting journey, as a parent, you think you are a wheel because you are driving the entire family. You are taking responsibility of the entire family. Am I correct in my understanding? Correct. And the reason right. my wife role would be a steering. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I think because she is taking control of the family mm -hmm. and leading the, the vehicle to the destination. Mm -hmm. In the parenting journey, is your wife's role as a steering wheel? Am I correct in my understanding? Correct. So here we are talking about as a parent, right? Correct. All right, beautiful. All right. And what do you think? What do your uh, children would think you to be? Which part of the car do they think? My children probably, my, my, I have one boy mm -hmm. who is 17, uh, mm -hmm. now turning into 18 within a couple of months. Uh, All right. So he is thinking we are the uh, you can say you know a parent which is only looking after the the career. This is this is the honest answer that I can give now. However, I, I am so happy that you are so honest, and that's the beauty of the entire exercise. I'm so happy, and that's why I took the car example because it's very non-threatening, and I, I could see majority of them were you and thought like. However, however, I have, I have to say something. However, yeah. when, when he he understand the the motive behind, mm -hmm. he sit down himself and then come to uh, come to a realization that whatever we are saying is making some sense later on. But mm -hmm. the way but the way he perceives is maybe. You know, different than uh, probably what we are thinking or we are guiding them. Mm, beautiful. And which part of the car you want to be in your parenting journey? I still wanted to be a part of uh, like a wheel, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but and my you wife. You spoke about the wheel is more taking a responsibility in terms of like uh, being the head of the family and uh, I mean, obviously finance or whatever the other aspects. But if I if I ask you specifically as a parent, which part of the car you want to be? Think about it. I mean, think about it, uh, the perception of your child. And you said, yes, maybe uh, the way you are communicating or what he is understanding. So which part of the car do you think you want to be as a parent? Because what as happens a, is, as, yes, as a parent, is, as a yes. parent, we would like to have, we would like to be an engine. But All right, the, wheel, why? the wheel will take that journey gone, through, you know, at, uh, basically reach through. Mm -hmm. All right, I, I missed that. You said as a parent, you would want to be an engine, and you said wheel will take through, and I, I just missed it. I'm so sorry. Prasad. I said, we, as a parent, both of us would like to be an engine. Mm -hmm. However, right. the wheel. However, the wheel would take that car to the destination. Mm -hmm. So what I understand is your parenting journey, the compass of your parenting journey is more about providing the direction right now. It's because even in terms of the age of your child, right? And when, while you are providing the direction, there needs to be some, what he's saying is he's in the different space so there is two way which I, I'll come specifically is either we pull or we get them to our space or we or we create a magnet. All right. So for you to move uh, Prasad, from being the wheel uh, to being an engine in the parenting journey, what are the things? which you have to say what are your beliefs what are your habits what are your demeanor which you have to say tata goodbye to 
And what are the things, what are the demo, what are the new approach which you have to ingrain in yourself? What do you think around this line for me, please? Sorry, I just, your voice just broke. I could not hear all the... Sure, I'll just repeat it again, no worries. I said, from the journey where you are right now, your starting point, you said you view yourself as a V. To getting it to be, you want to be the engine, okay? So I said to travel from being a wheel to being an engine. What are the things? What are the habits? What are the behavior? What is what is in you, the belief system, behaviors, habits, maybe the way you communicate? What is something which you have to say tata goodbye to? Or what is the new outlook? which you have to ingrain within you. Okay. Okay. Uh, my what, answer uh, to... Just a sec. Okay, so sorry. That's what I would invite each one of you to think through. All right. Please think through this. <laughs> yes. Okay. I think the, the answer to that would be is uh, that first is that being, uh, we need to be very open. We need mm -hmm. to be more acceptable. Mm -hmm that this is what is happening now this is what is now the, these are the changes that we are uh, uh, going to see the other thing is that we need to be we need to create those platforms for them to grow mm -hmm. all right and, uh, do i have a permission to write it down prasad can i write it down for me to yes, 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 yes. yeah all right thank you so much yeah please go on i'm just writing on my whiteboard i'm all so, yours to you yeah okay the first thing i would we should we need to be open Mm -hmm. Second, we need to be really acceptable in terms of what is currently going on in terms of the, the changes compared to mm -hmm. our childhood. Mm -hmm. The third thing is that we need to create ourselves, uh, 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 sorry, for them a platform mm -hmm. where they can grow mm -hmm. and push them to push them to believe in them. Mm, beautiful i like that point mm. and i think that's what i can i i personally do sometimes i also get uh uh you know uh, you can say a bit impatient in doing that mm. because mm. because uh, you know we are we are we born and brought up in a such a way that the competition is the only thing that we had to face from our childhood whereas mm. nowadays competition is still there but you need to come out from that and then be open and accept yes. yes so beautiful i liked uh the especially the third point which you stated that you need to have a platform wherein they can believe in themselves so that's very very deep um acceptability open and i i even appreciate that you are very open in expressing that you sometimes become impatient in your parents thank you yeah so i really appreciate thank you so much for volunteering thank you so much uh, so, uh, so not be with me, be with me for another uh, minute. We need to just, uh, you know, complete the circle. So, Prasad, out of the three points that you stated, which is going to be number one focus? If I were to ask you, if I were to invite you to choose one, which one it would be? Sorry, what would you say? Out of your three options, okay, let's look at this. Out of your three options, you said being open. How are you on the scale of one to 10? One being the low and 10 being the highest. If you're completely sharing, please share. Uh, whatever I'm saying, I typically follow myself first that. All right, but on the scale of one to 10 with respect to your child, I mean, I know I'm putting it in, in, in numbers, you know, but that's what is going to help us that, you know, after we walk out from today's think shop, we have okay. Some okay. So the, for the third number, third for third number, I would go for the maximum. All right, ten. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. And the second, what one you put? Acceptability. Acceptable. That's. Uh, that's currently, I am say I am currently fifty fifty because I am not. Okay. Five. Giving, Can I put five? Yeah. Okay. Open. Open. We need to be open. Is basically I would put seven. Okay. So, you know, though you stated the third one to be 10, that they need to believe in themselves, but till the time you are not very open to the different ideas, till the time you are not going to accept, the third Agreed. one is really not going to uh, meet the 10 number. So, Agreed. I would even invite you, uh, Prasad, to study this exercise 
ask your son um, to, to you know, uh, share what does he think, you know, on the scale of one to 10, where are you? And that would become your focus. And that's where the conscious parenting will come in. And that's where you will be able to create magnet and have specified action items. I, I completely agree. This is what I'm currently working on. The 50% that I put, I need to be 80% ASAP. And uh, mm -hmm. I would say where I put 70, I put, I need 30% to, to really go. And Beautiful. Finish. And you would get somewhere. I mean, you will make a little needle move in the next exercise, what we are going to do, wherein you are going to find out that why you are not accepted. You know, how can we widen that? What is the barrier we are facing? That you're going to figure out in the next slide as we walk in. All right, sure. anyone sure. else would like, thank you, Prasad. Uh, thank you so much, we so appreciate. Thank you. For that. Anyone else would like to walk along with me? Uh, Reshma, Reshma, you have unmuted yourself. Reshma Mehta. Uh, yes, I don't know which part uh, I think I am, but my family definitely thinks I'm a steering. All right. My All daughter right. is 16, so uh, she's in the teenage. Uh, hmm. So definitely she thinks that I try to uh control or maybe you know tell her what to do at a lot of times in her thing and part i would have want to be i don't know about the car but definitely i want to be a passenger with her right now uh, mm. uh you know, i just want to sit with her and see where she is going what she wants to do mm. uh, very difficult for me to just sit back and see so yeah that's what uh, i think i want to do so i admire that reshma and if you see especially for all the teenagers and for all the mothers uh, you would see usually they have been viewed as a steering wheel largely yeah if you see right that's the i mean we just took two examples and that's what you would see largely all the mothers would be viewed as a steering wheel and this is exercise which i do even with the children and even with the adults even with the couple and I always feel when in the family, I always feel the steering wheel because we have innate so much that we want to be in control and we are the one who are navigating them. See, it is, it is so, you know, I was just doing a small experiment with you all that, you know, unconsciously, it is so much ingrained within us that it comes. So we need to be conscious about it. All right, beautiful. You said that you want to be the passenger with your, um, with your daughter right and yes. uh, so reshma what is preventing you to be the passenger what is a barrier what do you think what do you have to say tata goodbye to remember we are a traveler right so we need to carry a light backpack with us so what is something which you need to drop so that you can be a passenger with her uh, like like he said earlier that i need to believe in her uh, you know that she would do certain things if I'm not not guiding her if I'm, uh, to do it in a certain way. I, I feel like suppose if she has some class and if I don't tell her to get ready on time, she may not. But then I think I should take a step back and just let her do whatever she wants to do. Maybe she'll learn from her mistakes, but I'm not able to stop myself. Yeah, because we feel like oh. we are going to lose out and I'm a mother. How can I give up on that? And you know, I, 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 I want to be there. So that's why it's very important that, you know, um, so a, a couple of points out here. I'm going to give you a lot of examples from my own family as well, right? A couple of points out here. Mm -hmm. So what, is it, what do we feel, you know, even if we feel till the time we can keep on relying on someone and someone is there to reinforce us, we are okay with it right if we are going if you know that you know uh, because you know that someone is going to always keep on telling you right yeah. thing is yeah. that you need to have a rational talk with her because you want to be the passenger with her right have a rational talk with her be vulnerable yeah. i'm sure at times even your mom and may have to push you when you were growing up for something if it is then share with her that hey this is pretty normal you know Sometimes, you know, if you're working, tell her, like, sometimes we just don't feel like and we want to relax. So I understand how do you feel. The moment right. you tell them that you understand how do you feel, what have you done? You have come to their space. Mm -hmm. Then create a magnet and create a new space rather than pushing them or pulling them. So right now, what's happening? Right now, it's a push and pull happening. Right. Right. 
So create a magnet, right? Create a new space. So how do you create a new space? Is only when they are sure that it is something for them. So you have a conversation with our age. You can tell her like, it's quite normal. Sometimes even we do feel so. But why is it important to adhere to the timelines? Tell her like, what would happen? Suppose if you're waiting for pretty long for someone and someone just doesn't turn up, how would you feel? And yeah. what would you do? Uh, would you feel it's your waste of time? Would you feel that you are not respected? Ask her. So what is the pain and what is the, what is the gain? What is the gain and what is the pain? So then tell her like, you know, if in the mathematics, if your gain equation is more, the weighing, okay, Tarazu, if the, if the weighing of this is more, then my dear daughter, do you want to do that? If you want to do that, then yeah, let's continue doing it. What did you do? Maybe one conversation may not work, Reshma. Yeah, it does. Similarly, if you keep on reinforcing her this, first of all, she'll be shocked. What has happened to mom? Why is she doing this? And she'll be like, yeah, what she's talking makes sense. I mean, she's cool. She understands it's pretty normal. You know, some children they really they really enjoy. Like for example, I share with my daughter that I was specific at math. And I used to say, she thinks it's okay. She thinks it's okay. You know, you can have you can have different strengths. So you have to be very vulnerable with your children. That's the first step. Because that's the way, you know, especially when they get into that teenage, you remember we take that rational, that's the where the rational thinking is developing. Right. You remember the cycle of see, feel, think, do, right? So then they see, hey, this is normal. Even my mom has gone through it and she has done it. Okay, fine. And then what happens? That trust increases, right? So if you create a magnet right. and if they think that you're not pushing and pulling, but you are coming to their space, you're understanding, and then you're creating together, you're partnering in a new space. That's what you're being an intentional. Because remember, I told you that traditional is very child-centered. And that's what you're doing, right? That's what we have been trained to. That it's all about the power. It's all about the punishment. It's all about the cause and effect. But what we need to do is we need to move differently. And we need to start thinking differently. So you, you need to bring in a personal transformation if you need to empower her. Absolutely. Does it make sense? It yeah, Risha? absolutely. All right. Yes, so do yes. try. I will try. I will try that. Absolutely, do try it. And actually, you all should do this exercise with your, with your, uh, with your children. And you should tell them, you know, that which part of the car they think you are, and you will be surprised. You will be surprised with their responses. And ask them that why do they think so? You will be really surprised. And tell them, ask their feet forward. You know, which part of the car they would want you to be and how you can be that part. And then that's where. But remember, when you're going to have this conversation, you need to drop the drop your ego. You need to drop out that power centric and you need to be in a space of a learner mindset. That's why. That's why. Keep on telling again and again. It's all about you. All right. It's all about inward excellence. <laughs> all right. Uh, now this is the second exercise where I'm going to invite you to think about, all right? I want all of you to think about one parenting situation which you are really struggling with as is. Again, I'm going to invite two volunteers for this. As is, one situation which you're struggling with, which is like, oh my God, give me a break. <laughs> all right? So any that one situation wherein you feel like, oh my God, it's really taken a lot of me. So one situation which you're struggling with, the ideal thing, what do you want? All right. So let's go first this, then we'll proceed, uh, you know, we'll go along together. I'll take someone, uh, you know, to volunteer and then I'll explain the others. So any one situation right now, I know they can be many or they can be zero, but I'll ask you, I'll invite you to take one, to single out any one situation right now, which you are grappling with which is like really challenging you and what's an ideal situation you would want to be all right one situation and the ideal situation it can be like my child doesn't eat healthy food or my child's screen time is too much my child just just doesn't listen to me or my child back on to me or uh, my child every time makes a no statement that you know i i don't understand him or her any one situation which you're struggling right now with. 
any one parenting situation and what is the ideal scenario you would want for those who are uh, watching us on facebook live because this is a participative session if they would just click on the link and join in just in case they would want to um, join us for the participation please do that now thank you for all others who are ready please feel free to unmute yourself i think abhay do you want to participate yeah uh, avinash am i audible yes you yes. are audible thank wonderful you. go for it okay. <laughs> puja hi uh, first i will tell you the situation and then uh, the problem quickly uh, the earlier slide and uh, i always believed in this and both of us uh, uh, husband and wife we try to do this we always are uh, mirrors at home uh yeah. how it has helped us my daughter is 16 and son is 10 now is that we always tell them uh, and we are, we ourselves do is be true to yourself okay uh, we do not force them for us uh, the world is the car and you know the uh, the situations are the steerings which is uh, at times in your hands uh, may not be in your hands but just be true to yourself uh, you don't like studies don't do it you 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 don't want to play outside don't play if you want to watch uh, you know screen time do that but then while doing that understand what are you going to gain out of it awesome now now this is simple this is what we do we have been seeing good results of however at times at times typically for a teenager okay uh, for a teenager you cannot say anything okay we all were teenagers in a part of life i mean You know, you cannot say them anything. Not that uh, they are wrong, not that we are wrong, but it is better not to tell. Them. Now, at times when you tell them that uh, you know you be a mirror of yourself, you see what you want to, uh, you know, you, what you want to be, and they understand what it is. At times, because of their age, they cannot control certain desires. Though they understand this is not good, though they know it may not be good. but because of the influence of friends and especially the friends for teenagers okay uh, they feel it is good okay not to tell few things to parents it is good not to be true always and stuff like that so i don't blame uh, you know child for it i know they are not in the wrong uh, what you can say wrong path but at times they prefer not to be uh, you know mirror and it's a very delicate situation that you don't want to scold the child uh, you want them to be truthful to themselves at the same time you don't want them to be get influenced uh, you know uh, by external forces uh, and if it happens with elder child the younger child copies so it's a long explanation i hate to do this i prefer to ask a question in one sentence but i thought i'll give a background beautiful that, uh, no problem you know how to how to how to do this otherwise we have been very successful being uh, mirrors we do it ourselves all my friends know that what i'm external is internal my wife is similar my children are similar but typically for a teenager uh, just if you can help uh, uh, you know balancing this particular act sure Congratulations, first of all, on your parenthood journey and the milestones so far. So, how would I approach to it? Now, I'm going to get in. I'm going to tie up everything. Me being in that, my experience of dealing, uh, of coaching, uh, children as well as the corporate experience. So, what happens is if we get back again to that brain level, right? Or the survival, the connection, and the execution. So that's the time, and the execution is at eleven, eleven to twelve, and fifteen, and then later on to twenty-first, twenty-five is unfolding. So when children start looking outside, is when they want validation as well, or what they are thinking. Yes, the peer pressure is going to be there always, but how do we tell them? Like you know, do you not go in the peer pressure? Is again when we become vulnerable, which is that you are already doing like a mirror. and again we get them to that thought process we map with them together that you know um, when would you look outside if we ask such questions you can just have a family time simple round of time and you say like hey when would i look outside is when i want to validate when i'm not getting um, when i'm not getting that enough uh, 
enough confidence or enough knowledge what I want. So fair enough, if you want to look outside, you can look outside. Let me give you a few parameters. Probably you should take in count that parameters so that whenever you are looking at your friends, you can just validate that do they fit that parameters. And then you can decide and you can form opinion. That's the dialogue you can have. So typically the three parameters just loosely uh, saying is um, on the trust because there's a lot of trust, right? And that's the time in the teenage you don't want children to be influenced uh, wrongly by someone, right? So the best thing is to tell them that you're going to trust. And trust has various levels. It's not like you can you can't trust anyone unconditionally. So explain them that process. Tell them like the trust, um, which we do a lot of in our workshop with the teenagers. So tell them like there is four levels of trust. One is your highest level is the unconditional level, but everything starts with the zero level, zero trust. And then it is transactional. You know that if you are going to do something, that person is going to do something for you. All right. Uh, then there is a trust that you do something now. In future, sometime that person may help you. So while my dear daughter, uh, I would encourage you to go out and to examine, to evaluate, but be sure that you're not pressing anyone, placing everyone on the unconditional level. Have you placed all your friends on the unconditional level? Then you need to evaluate your map. Put the ball in their coat help them give them those inputs because that's the time you can just give them those tools and you can invite them to evaluate but keep on giving them such tools then you can tell them like if you're going to trust someone ensure that in the trust metrics they fit in this three c criteria that the person really cares for you honestly give them some example how can does the person has that character which the person has demonstrated and does that person has competence for example, if you know if you need some advice about your uh, some project work and you're going to go with someone who just doesn't have any knowledge, you may waste your time. So, you know, give them those tools. That's what I would say over here. Because this is the age, as you rightly said, we need to uh, we need to flex our style. So when they're developing as they when they're growing and even at this age, they keep on seeing a lot that how are we modeling. And you said like you are very beautifully being the mirror, which is so beautiful. At this age, but a continuous input of making them equipped, of telling them like what is uh, what are the things which are in their control, what are the things which are not in control, because they don't want to miss the bus. They feel like oh everyone is doing that, why I, I am left out? They don't want to be fear of leaving out, of fear of missing out. Puma, they don't want that, right? So that's why, again, we have to create a magnet. We have to invite them a new space, a space wherein they understand. A space wherein you have equipped them with the right tools, with the mindset, wherein they are open. And just keep on telling them, like, hey, wherever you need me, I am there. Just keep me, you know, I would want to know that uh, not more from, like, keeping an eye from you, but just remember that I'm always there for you along the journey so a uh, continuous that's kind of a trust in terms of your words in terms of your action i'm equipping them as something which can be done beautifully at the age of 16 to 19 i feel and thereafter they are all set I and mean, they already have the things they already have a map what they want to do but this is the time even they are exploring they're exploring a lot of things so children have this uh, you know they have like what are they judged so somewhere you have to tell them like you are not being judged. I mean, we feel sometimes like our, our parents really, uh, our children really feel like we are not judging them, but sometimes deep in their heart, they do feel that we are judging them. So you need to tell them like, we are not judging you. It's okay. You can't be good. Classic, my daughter is very good in maths. Okay. She is excellent in maths. This time, she, somehow her grades were, uh, they have the bands. Her band was not as per what she expected. And she was crying bitterly. And I told her, why are you crying bitterly? We are happy. She's like, no, Papa, help me in studying so much and what he would think about me. You know, I have let him down. I was like, but we are not even talking about that. We are absolutely okay. She said, no, he spent so much of time with us. Just imagine. So much of like, you know, and this thing gets amplified. If the children are not really uh, expressing themselves because they don't want 
somewhere so that let them down or they don't want to be judged. So this is the time they want to just keep it to themselves and they want to keep on exploring. And they feel like the friends are everyone is in the same boat. So they will not judge me. I hope some of that answers are there. Uh, honestly, uh, you have done your part. Now my part is after Avina shares the video, I'm going to listen to it again. Uh, and then I can answer whether I've understood then. Uh, you know. Sure. And I'll invite you to enroll your daughter in our boot camp. <laughs> so then we can have more specific about it. All right. Wonderful. Um, so what do we do is we have as is, ideal, and then like a pair said, that what is he saying about it? Right? He said, like, I know it. The other things I'm doing good. But this is a thing like, you know, I'm worried. So what are the feelings which are coming? Feelings of worried, feelings of like, am I being connected? She is understanding. You know, the fear of like having a wide gap. So that's all what you're saying. So what I want you to do is, as is, how is the challenge? The ideal situation, how do we want? What are you saying about it? What are you saying about it? Then the important thing is, what is in your circle of control and what is outside? What is in your circle of control? Very important here. Whatever you're saying, what you can control is only your thoughts, your actions, your behaviors. Right? How are you responding to it? You can't definitely control, like, is she going to influence any other, other friends? I'm going to have a control over her friends. We can't do that. Or his friends. We can't. I mean, I'm just, I'm just stretching it. We can't. We can't say, like, if I'm going to say something, she or he is going to completely listen to me. We don't have control over that. But what we have is that connection, and we have to look and exercise what is in our control. Because most of the time, we spend time outside and then we are left with very little energy and we feel it's so drained we are exhausted because what you have done you have spent so much of time in the things which are outside your control so i want you to then look at the things what am i not seeing about it what are the possibilities maybe the possibility is right at this age she wants to explore which is good i should be proud of the job what i have done so far as a parent that she wants to explore things she is trying or he is trying to be a creative mindset to try different avenues wow so you have to look at the different things positively like what are the things or the possibilities i would say widen your world of possibilities what are the things you're not looking at and then you can create the magnet it's all about the parenting is all about creating a magnet being conscious about um, about your journey. I'll tell a very small story here, a very small story, uh, which really caught my attention. Obviously, I was reading it a few days back. I was reading it. So there was this um, there was this monk and there was this businessman, so very famous businessman, did wonderful, but somehow he had some pain in his eye, right? And there then Avinash advised him that, uh, listen, why don't you come to Qatar? In Qatar, we have a very good monk has traveled all the way from um, from Tibet. So come over there. And uh, so the businessman said, is it going to really help? Reshma said, yeah, yeah, you should go in. So the businessman um, went to the monk and he said, like, I have a problem in this eye. And it's been like, I have visited so many doctors. I just don't know what to do. So the monk very patiently smiled. And monk said, like, um, from now on, whatever you want to see, you have to see green in color. Okay, what is he saying? But okay, fine. My good friends have told like Kreshma, Vinash, so I'm going to listen to it. So he went and he ordered everyone around that whatever I see from today onwards, it has to be green in color. After a few days, uh, Monk was visiting uh, Monk was visiting Prasad. So Monk said, okay, let me go and visit my disciple and see that how is he doing. The moment he stepped in, there were a few helpers of you uh, you know his assistants who came in who put the entire green bucket on the monk monk being monk very patiently calmly you were smiling he said why have you done this son so till that time that businessman comes in and he says like because you advised me to see everything green in color so the monk said my dear child if you would have got just a green color glass the frame the lens, if you would have just got that green color, it would have sorted out everything. What you did was you went around changing everything around you. You had so much of expense. 
you lost all your energy, you had no energy and you felt it's not working, it's not working. So sometimes we need to just pause, reflect and tune within us rather than changing around everything. So we need to just see what is in our circle of control. <laughs> all right. So here I'm going to invite all of you. All right. I would want to know that what is something from today onwards which you will stop doing, which you will start doing, and what is one learning which you have had from today's our interaction? So, so let's do it this way. The world has got virtually. So imagine I have a virtual ball in my hand and I'm going to throw it to a person. So whomever I throw it to, let's to see what, what he or she would stop doing, start doing from today in their parenting journey. And what has been one learning which they have got from today as it was like a small thing shop for us. All right. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this ball to Sridhar. Sridhar, please hold on to the ball. <laughs> so Sridhar, what are you going to start doing? Uh, stop doing? Uh, Sridhar, what, sir, if I'm reading it right? What are you going to stop doing, start doing? And what is your one learning from the session today? You can choose Sridhar who's going to answer next. <laughs> Let's get the ball rolling. We can't hear you, Shridhar. Would you like to just unmute yourself? Yeah. Can you repeat the session? Sorry. Yes. So my question was, from today's session, uh, whatever we have discussed, what are you going to stop doing? What are you going to start doing? And what has been your one learning today? Yes, I will start today. बेसिकली मेरा जो घर पे बच्चों के साथ इंटरेक्शन होता है आजकल अभी क्या है स्क्रीन टाइम बढ़ गया है बच्चों का मोबाइल से अटैच ज्यादा हो गए तो मोबाइल पे काफी सारे एप्स आते हैं जैसे कि टिकटॉक है टिकटॉक का काफी सारा अट्रैक्शन बच्चों को हो गया क्योंकि काफी सारे वीडियोस लोग डालते हैं तो बच्चों को अच्छा लगता है विजुअली देखना सुनना एनेक्ट करना so, ये थोड़ी परेशानी भी बन गई है मेरी एक्चुअली घर पे आप इसमें पॉसिबिलिटी देखिए श्रीधर जी आप इसमें देखिए कि सॉरी आप दिखाई दे रहे थे अभी आप दिखा और आप इसमें नो नो वरी मैं सोच रही थी कि कहाँ ये वर्चुअल वर्ल्ड में थोड़ा दिक्कत हो जाती है कभी राइट राइट तो आप इसमें पॉसिबिलिटी दे� आप एक टाइम प्रोवाइड कर दीजिए कि दिन में दो घंटा आपको भी टाइम निकालना पड़ेगा फिर आपको भी अपने वर्क उस हिसाब से ऑर्गेनाइज करनी होगी क्योंकि वो वो बोर हो रहे हैं सीधी सी बात राइट हम भी हमारी भी काफी लाइफस्टाइल चेंज हुई है तो आपको भी थोड़ा सा उनकी स्पेस में आना पड़ेगा उनको न्यू स्पेस क्रिएट करना पड़ेगा यू इन्वाइट दम और आप उन्हें बोलिए कि आपको वीडियोज बनानी है बनाइए पर आप ऐसी कुछ चीज पे बनाइए कि आप बता रहे हैं कि आपने क्या नया सीखा है आप डेफिनेटली बनाइए आप बच्चों को बोले I will help you in making the TikTok videos I will do that but let's do that what have you learned today something new कुछ भी हो सकता है tell them it can be anything anything whatever you want तो बच्चों को लगेगा कि अच्छा ठीक है दादी हमें सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं और इससे क्या होगा आप उनकी माइंड को एक्सपैंड कर रहे हैं क्योंकि स्क्रीन टाइम या कोई भी टाइम हम कैसे यूज़ करें वो बहुत इम्प are we using it effectively to our knowledge? Is it consuming us? Or are we being the creator? This situation is what is in our control. We shift them, flip them, that you are from the consumer mindset. Or what is going on, don't look at it without your mind. But create it. What have you done with it? Many children will feel like, yes, that is understanding, that is allowing us. And plus, you have created a new possibility. Right? I hope it makes sense. If you have any questions, tell me what you will do. What will you do? Hello? Yes, yes. What will you do in your own mind? My question is this. My question is what you will do in your own mind. I will shift my mindset. I will tell them a little bit. I will encourage you to make it so that 
ताकि वो एक्टिविटी में इन्वॉल्व हो जाए उनका थोड़ा सा प्रोडक्टिव कुछ निकल के आए मतलब उनका क्रिएटिव माइंड थोड़ा सा ब्रश अप हो जाए देखिए जब टाइपराइटर था जब टाइपराइटर आने वाला था तब 101 रीजन दिए थे कि टाइपराइटर क्यों नहीं आना चाहिए उसमें से एक सॉरी टेन रीजन दिए थे कि टाइपराइटर क्यों नहीं आना चाहिए अब उसमें से एक रीजन ये था कि फॉर सो मेनी इयर्स वी हैव बीन राइटिंग बाय आवर हैंड्स हम हाथ से लिख रहे हैं तो उसमें कुछ तो अच्छा ही होगी तो हमें टाइपराइटर क्यों चाहिए उसके बाद टाइपराइटर के बाद जब कंप्यूटर आने वाला था तो बोला कि कंप्यूटर क्यों चाहिए क्योंकि टाइपराइटर में कुछ तो मतलब टाइपराइटर हैक नहीं होता है कितनी सारी आई हमें टाइपराइटर से कंप्यूटर पे क्यों जाना है तो जब भी कुछ भी चेंज होता है तो कॉन्स्टेंट है हमारी लाइफ में हमें लगता है कि ऐसे क्यों हो रहा है पर आज का जमाना ये है टेक्नोलॉजी वर्ल्ड और टेक्नोलॉजी नहीं होती तो आज आप और मैं बात नहीं कर रहे होते जनरेशन जी माई सन ही सीज मी बिकॉज मेरा प्रोफेशन ये की मैं वीडियोज बनाती है नाइस सो He loves now making videos. So, abhi wo apna alag -alag videos videos I I what are you going to learn? He doesn't use the the TikTok or anything, but the normal app. So he'll say, okay, hello guys, today this is what I'm making. So what happens? उसमें कॉन्फिडेंस बोलने की जो कॉन्फिडेंस है पब्लिक स्पीकिंग का प्योर भाग रहा है उसमें से subconsciously. So all the best in your journey. All right, I'm going to invite five six people to share their journey, and then I'm going to hand it over to Abhinash. Does it sound good, Abhinash? श्रीधर कौन से तेरी नाव घे भगवान सुजीत जी सो नाउ बॉल इज इन माई कोर्ट सो वॉट आई लर्न फ्रॉम पूजा इज लाइक um yeah it's a journey first of all and uh, i am very proud you know that uh, rudra has attended first boot camp and whatever i can reconnect i mean he is also here so he he is you know reconnecting oh okay and there are, i have what i have learned there are a lot of things which he tells me oh papa this has been already discussed you know so yeah so my journey after that is really good and definitely uh, you know and it's like um, whenever i feel i am angry my son comes and he said no papa you should not you know listen soda water uh, soda kid and water kid you know there are concepts so yes so what i am doing now i am doing myself first rather than telling them to do it and they are following me so i am happy if i want to read i read it and i see you know my both kids are reading automatically i am not telling anything now you know if i don't want to watch TV, our tv is we stop and they also don't see if i don't want to you know do anything in mobile i don't do it i do it something which they also feel yeah papa is doing means something is there so yeah so a lot of things uh, what i wanted to tell you is a lot of things we should learn from them also so we should have learning mindset you know and be open so that that is what i am learning and i will be learning you know throughout uh, my career so Beautiful. that's about it Me. Excellent, excellent. That's very nice. So those of you who were wondering what is soda and water, so this is what we teach children in the boot camp. So soda is being reactive, and water is being proactive, taking charge of your life. So that's what we teach them in their in their the um, language. So thank you, thank you so much, Sudhi, for sharing in. Um, you would want to pass on the ball to him, whom? Let's hear from someone whom we have not interacted. Let's pass on to someone whom we have not. let me see i can see dr jagdish sharma Gan, uh, gajanan shrinivas no, no, i'll pass it to uh, i'll pass it to sunil mr sunil is there sunil sunil would you like to unmute yourself and share with us please hi everyone sunil gulia here 
Hi, so, okay. so thanks for passing ball to me first of all. I really enjoyed it. It was fantastic. And what I will say that what I will talk today, and in fact from today is judging in advance. Right? Let child speak up first. Listen to them. Right? We will need to have more patience. Let's hear them fully so that we have more information that what they want to convey first. And once we listen to them carefully, don't give the conclusion, don't give decision to them. Help them to try to reach their own decisions. Like being a facilitator, like being a conductor in the car, not a driver, not, a, not pulling them, not pushing them, but yes, facilitate them to reach to their decision, what they want to be, be a mirror, be like a coach, and then guide them as a coach. Coach don't teach them everything, they play like this, play in this way. No, they teach them, this is how you are today. This is what you are making mistake, or this is what your strength is. Now you decide how you want to exploit your strength, and how you want to overcome your mistakes. So that is what I learned from today's session and I will be doing. Beautiful, thank you. Thank you so much, Sunil. Thank you so much. All right, so the ball is in my coat now. All right, so Avinash, with your permission, I'll just take another minute and I will just yes. tell them about um, about my upcoming boot camp. Is it okay, Absolutely. can I do that? Yes, please, right. please. So I'll just quickly take a minute because uh, so just got in that point and I said, yeah, I need to speak about the upcoming boot camp and as well as when I was talking to up here. So I'll just take, um, I mean, you guys have been like wonderful, wonderful audience. I'll just take in another minute. Let me see. All right. So this is what I do uh, in Leadership Demystified webinars. You can check on my Facebook page. So I have started working on a golden triangle. Now, what is this golden triangle is parents and educators and children that's what i am besides my coaching work that's what we do so we are coming up with our uh, first boot camp all right and it's going to start uh, from 21st, 21st of uh, june it starts it is for the children of eight years to 14 years that's the first category and the second category is for the children from 15 to 20 years what do we do in this? Three things, ignite, inspire, impact. So these are the three uh, components what we cover on. It's an entire integrated of body, mind, and soul. So I teach on five modules, being proactive, taking charge of your life, time intelligence, goal settings, and uh, being the, uh, you know, identifying your robber, time robbers, communicate, connect, empathy, assertiveness, listening skills, all right? Finding your inner voice, finding what's the limiting belief, empowering belief, and having a win-win mindset. Now, they are my thought leaders. Uh, Dr. Jignasai, she does on a vision board. Monika, she gives inputs. This happens on Saturday, Sunday, is when my thought leaders, my guest thought leaders come in. I think it's by saying this slide. So, Dr. Um, Jigna Desai is on vision board. Monika is on diet. Kasturi is on yoga. Miss Sushi is on happiness, and then we have Chrissy who does on peer pressure. How to navigate through the peer pressure. Ashley teaches in gratitude, and we have a thought and expression segment wherein Yusuf he teaches on how to effectively express yourself on videos mindfully. Then we have Nazuminasa who teaches on how to write blogs and. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Ruby Bakshu teaches like public speaking on stage because it can be various forms of expression, right? It can be through writing books, it can be through videos, it can be through um, speaking on the stage. Then we have Deva Priya Baswas who teaches a life skill, cooking. So there are videos which have been sent. So these are the sessions which happens over weekend. My session happens over weekday. It's a seven consecutive uh, boot camp. Um, we have priced it in such a way because this is my passion. So I know it is 4,100. Uh, but Abhinash, if anyone from here would like to enroll from your this group, I would love to offer them at around um, 3,800. 
for a seven day uh, boot camp INR. I would be happy to offer that to your family out here, the space of belonging. All right. Uh, so, this is, and we have children from various geographies coming in. We have children from Singapore, India. Uh, last time we had from Qatar as well. Uh, two of them were Shalini, Sujit's uh, son. And our Sujit's son was in our first batch. And uh, we have from Nepal, Ukraine, Russia, Africa, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, uh, many more countries. So, it's an amalgamation of international coaches and children coming together. Why age from eight years to fourteen years? Helping them to teach empathy, helping them to you know interact with uh, with the various group of ages. And so just thank you so much. I mean, it was, it was really fun. Uh, it was really an honor to work with Rudra as well. And thank you so much, uh, Sujit and Abhinash, for inviting um, to this space wherein I got to share my own um, my own journey because it is a continuous journey. And you all are continuously evolving in this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. Thank so you so you. much to you, Pooja. And uh, just for those who are in Qatar, it's just 181 riyals um, uh, converted. And it's um, for India from INR, it's just 3,800. This is a special prize given. So thank you so much again for extending that, Pooja. The session was wonderful. And I think uh, for all the parents who are a part of this session, we are going to conduct the next one, which is the art of parenting with yet another global speaker who's going to be uh, as interesting. And it's going to be a wonderful session for the next Saturday. As we know that this is a part of the Dream, Believe, Achieve series where Saturdays won't be the same again. So please do feel free to go on to the website, go on to our Facebook page. Please connect with Pooja on her Facebook page. Go on to AD's Coaching and NLP Masterminds Doha group. Connect with us and get the exciting sessions Saturday every Saturday from here on. Thank you so much for joining in. And, and, and Pooja, it was really wonderful. And we wish to see you again. And hopefully we have a lot of participation for your boot camps from Qatar and from India. On that note, I would like to end this session. Thank you all. Let's see you next Saturday. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Be safe. Keep everyone safe. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.